Hi everyone, welcome to the React Basics 2020 course. This will be a five video course going over the basic fundamentals of React so that you can start developing React on your own and build websites of your own and UI in a more efficient way. This will be a five video series and I will be releasing the videos individually, so stay tuned for each one. Today we'll be going over how to build our first starter project and making our first component. So just to give a brief overview of what we will be making today, we'll be making a basic grocery list that you can check off. You can add any elements that you will like. These are all hard-coded input, checkboxes, and labels. So this is very static and simple, non-functional, and it's just used to give you an idea on how to make a React component. Hope you guys enjoy. Today Today, you will learn how to set up a React starter project using Create React app, how to install dependencies using Yarn or NPM, how to build React components, both functional and classes, and how to add styling using SAS. So that's what we'll be learning today. This video is for anyone new to React, and I also assume anyone watching has a basic understanding of JavaScript and HTML. If you don't, I recommend brushing up on the basics of those languages before watching this series. Anyways, I hope you enjoy. Leave a like and share, and let's get started. So before we get started, let's talk about a little bit what React is. React is a JavaScript framework that makes building UI components in a browser seamless. React uses what is called JSX, which allows you to combine JavaScript and HTML code. And for those of you who don't know what I mean by UI, I mean user interface, which is simply the components you'd interact with on a site, like a form, buttons, menus, dropdowns, anything a user would interfere with on a website. React makes developing those a lot easier. Before we get started, you'll need to make sure that you have both of the following on your machine, Node and NPM. Node can be easily installed on your Mac, Windows, or Linux by going to nodejs.org and selecting the installer for your machine. If you have Mac, you'll want to run the Mac installer. And in case you didn't know, Node and NPM are installed together. So once you install Node, you'll have NPM and you'll want to ensure that you have Node 8.1 or greater in order for this to work. NPM will be used to add packages to our project. So if we need any dependencies or libraries that we want to use, NPM would be used to install that. However, I wanted to point out that I personally use Yarn over NPM. Um, Yarn was made by Facebook as an alternative to NPM. Both are simply just package managers, which means they just simply allow you to to install, upgrade, and remove packages from your project. The only difference between Yarn and NPM is the fact that Yarn is faster and more secure. So for example, Yarn can install multiple packages at once while NPM installs one at a time. So that is my brief synopsis on what NPM would be used for. I will be using Yarn. And now we can actually get started. So we're going to be using Create React App. Create React App is React's boilerplate project that comes with all the packages you need to start developing your React project. If you're interested in learning more about how it works, I'd suggest visiting createreactapp.dev and look at their documentation. Or you can go to reactjs.org. So the first thing you wanna do is open up your terminal. I personally use iTerm as my terminal. We'll be running some commands to build the Create React App project along with running the project so that we can use it in the browser. So I'm just gonna cd into the folder that I want my project to live in. cd just simply means change directory. So I'm going to go into the directory that I want my projects to live in. I put all my projects in a development folder. Now we're going to create this React app. So you're going to want to run npx create react app. Then there's going to be a third argument. The third argument represents a project name. Your project will live in the folder with the name that you give it. So I'm going to call this first project. And our React app is going to live in a folder called first project. I'm going to hit enter and this is going to take maybe about three minutes so that um, it starts bundling up this project and creating the default React app. Cool, so it looks like our Create React app has been created. Now you will want to cd into that project. And by cd, I mean change directories. So I'm just going to type cd first project, hit enter, and now we are inside of our project. So there is one dependency we want to have installed in order to apply SAS styling. This is completely optional. If you prefer using CSS, you can do that and you won't need to install this library. But if you want to use SAS, which is SCSS files, you will want to install Node SAS. And to do that, you will write either npm install Node SAS if you use npm. I personally prefer yarn and the syntax for that is yarn add Node SAS going to hit enter and that is going to install that dependency in our project. 
cool. So that has been installed. So now we are set up to be able to write SAS files without having any issues. If we didn't install this, you would have been given an error if you tried to write SAS. So the next step is to actually run the project. I want to be able to view this project in my browser. In order to do that, you're going to want to run either npm start if you use npm or yarn start if you use yarn. So like I said, yarn start will allow you to run your project and view it in the browser. This will run on port 3000 by default. Um, if you already have something running on this port, then React will ask you if it can run it on the next available port. And there you have your first React app. This is the React app boilerplate. So generally, if you want to make a new React project, you would make a create React app starter project first, and then you would um, remove the default code and start building something new of your own. So the first thing we're gonna, going to do is open up our IDE. I personally use VS Code. Cool, so as you can see on the side here, we have all the folders that live inside our project. We have the source directory, which contains all of our components and styles, React-related stuff, and then we have this public directory, but we won't be working in there. We will be mo mostly focusing on what is in this source directory here. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open app.js and remove React's default UI. Basically what you see here is what is inside of this app.js file, and we wanna remove that and replace that with code of our own. So I'm just simply going to remove all of this. Then if we go back to our site, we see we have nothing there because we removed everything. Another cool thing about this project is that it updates automatically every time you save. So if I make a change, save it, you'll see it automatically in your browser. So now we're gonna make our first component and I personally like to create my components in a components folder. So I'm just gonna right click on the source directory and create a new folder and call it components. And in here is where I'm going to create all the components that we'll be doing throughout this project. Um, but if you have a different way of making your projects or if you want to structure your project in a different way, you are more than welcome to do that. But personally, I think it's more organized to put your components in a components folder. And then when I make components, I give them their own folder. So I'm just going to right click, click new folder. And the component we'll be making is a grocery list today. So I'm just gonna call this grocery list and inside here is gonna be our code for the grocery list. So I'm gonna create a new file inside of that folder and call it index.js. Cool, so we made a components folder making a component called grocery list and the component code will live inside of this index.js folder inside of grocery list. You can also see the path if you use VS code, you can see the path of what file you're in above here before line one. So the first thing we're going to want to do before we start making our React components is actually import React. So before we get into it, the more general way to make a component is by using classes. React classes give you more access to features like state, life cycles, and towards the end of this video I'll show you an example of a React class. But today, in today's tutorial, We'll be using modern day React, which involves using functional components, which is literally just a function that returns some JSS syntax. So, like I said, a functional component is purely responsible for rendering JSX. So we want to render a grocery list. I'm going to make a function called grocery list. Make a return statement, and inside of these parentheses is where our JSX is going to live. Then I'm just going to export this component so that we can use it. I'm going to write export default grocery list. And writing export default grocery list is what makes this component accessible in other areas of this project. So here we have the skeleton of a functional component. We have our function with our component name, our return statement, which inside here will be our JSX that we want to render in the browser. Then we export it so that we can use this in other areas of our project. Also make sure to import React before you actually start writing your React code. So I'm going to make a div and my autocomplete doesn't work very well, so I'm just gonna have to write that manually. I'm gonna give this div a class name of grocery list. And then I'm simply going to make an H2 tag that says grocery list. So this will render some large bold text on the browser that says grocery list. So as of now, we don't really see anything in our browser, and that is because we removed everything in this app.js file. If we want to use this component that we just made, we're going to want to import that in app.js. I'm just going to type import grocery list from 
And the last thing you'll want to type is the path to your component. So I'm going to write that slash components grocery list. And that'll import our grocery list component. And we can use it down here by creating a tag and putting the component name in between the tag. And that is the syntax for reusing a component that you created. It's literally just the component name wrapped in these HTML tags. I'm going to hit save and we should expect to see this header that we just created. Cool. So you should see a header in the top center of your browser that says grocery list. Next, we are going to create the checkboxes for our grocery list and next to those checkboxes will be um, the elements that are on our grocery list like, for example, apples, oranges, kiwi, something along those lines. You're free to add whatever you like to your grocery list, um, but overall we want the same structure components. We want a checklist, a header, and then we are going to add some styling. So I'm just going to make an input tag and this input will be used um, for our checkbox. So I'm just going to make this a type uh, equal to checkbox and then give it a value of, let's say, apple. I'm just going to close that. Next, I'm going to make a label for that checkbox so that you can actually see some text next to it. say apples. I'm gonna hit save and if I look in my browser as you can see we have a checkbox that says apples. So since labels render in line if I were to add even more uh, checkboxes they would all render directly next to each other and we don't want that. I want this to be sort of like a list where there's um, a checkbox, a label, and then on the bottom there's another checkbox and a label. We don't want them to be next to each other, we want them to be going from up and down like a column. So what I'm going to use is this tag called break, which pretty much just creates an entirely new line. So if I were to add another checkbox, hit save, we'll see a new checkbox right below um, the previous one. So I'm just going to make this into, the, into something else. I'm going to call it like toilet paper. That's something that people usually need from the grocery store. And I'm going to continue to add some things to my list. Awesome. So as you can see, we have this nice grocery list, but there is one thing I don't like about it. I'm not a fan of how the checkboxes don't appear aligned, so I'm simply going to apply more styles. And like I mentioned earlier, I personally use SAS for styling, so make sure you have Node SAS installed if you want to use that, but if you just want to create um, CSS instead, you can use uh, you can make a .css file instead of a .scss file, which is used for SAS. So I'm going to make a new file and call it styles.scss. If you're using CSS, make sure the extension is just CSS. Then I'm going to move over to my component and import this file. So I'm going to do import.styles.scss. That means any styles that are added in this file will be applied to this component. So I'm just going to wrap this whole section um, that contains the inputs and labels with a div. I personally want to leave the header text alone, which is why I'm not also wrapping that. I'm only targeting these input and labels so that we can center um, or so that we can align the checkboxes properly. I'm going to give this a class name of grocery list container. Just going to align my code. If you want to ever format your JSX code, you can hit Command A and that'll select everything, then Command KF, which will automatically format everything. Looks a lot more easier to read that way. Then I'm just going to go into my styles file, going to target the class name that I added to that container, and I'm going to give it a width of 150 pixels. We don't want this checkbox or this checklist to be too wide. Then I'm going to say text align left so that each of those checkboxes will align left and they don't look off center like they do now. And then lastly, I'm gonna add margin auto. And this is gonna center um, our container so that it's not all the way on the end of the screen. I'm gonna hit save there and I'm gonna hit save here. Now, as you can see, our grocery list is perfectly aligned. And that is it guys, that is how you create a React component. It is really simple, it is no different than making a regular JavaScript function, except instead of returning a number or a string or whatever it is you would do in JavaScript, 
um, you would return a component. Now I'm gonna briefly go over how to use classes instead of functions. This is the more modern way to make React components, um, but previously there was a different way of doing that, and that was by using classes. So I'm gonna change this into a class by writing class grocery list, and we're gonna say extends React dot component. And a React component that is a class always comes with a render function. And within that render function is where you are going to return your JSX. So I'm going to type render. This is a function, so you need your parentheses. Then we're going to type out return. Or if anything, you can just paste your code in there. And that is literally how you make a React class. I'm also going to remove these parentheses here since this is not a function, it's a class. And that is simply how you make a React component class. The syntax is class, component name, extends react.component, then you have your set of curly braces, and inside of every React component comes with a render function, and within your render function you can return your JSX with all your HTML and JavaScript code. Also, to make sure that the component is reusable and can actually be used in different files, you'll want to make sure you export it, and that is all I have for today. So, just to give a brief overview of what we've covered, we have set up a basic React starter project. You can now create your own React projects on your own and get started with the Create React App boilerplate. We learned how to install dependencies. We installed Node SAS. For those of you who didn't, that is totally fine. Um, installing dependencies is literally no different. You can use the same syntax. It's literally just yarn add and then whatever dependency you want to add, or npm install whatever dependency you want to add. We also learned how to build functional React components. We made our first component was a function component, and then I also demonstrated to you guys how to make that into a class as well. And then lastly, we learned how to apply some styles using SAS. These are basically the basic fundamentals on how to make a basic static React component. You can extend off of this if you would like and add more stylings if you want to keep messing with it, but that is the general idea on how to create a React component. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. You can also feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very available. Um, I always like helping people and answering questions, so feel free to reach out. So make sure you stay tuned for the next video. The next one will be covering a little more in depth on React classes and React functional components. We'll be touching a little bit on hooks and life cycles. Um, I won't go too deep because I want you guys to understand the concepts of props and state first before we really start using those those features of React, but I at least want to compare um, what a class and function is more in depth. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next week.